On this episode of In Between Nines, we're playing with Amherst Brewing head brewer, Caleb Hiliotis. My name is Caleb Hiliotis. I'm the head brewer of Amherst Brewing. So I've never played real golf before, okay. uh, but I'm like a professional Wii golf as sports expert. Okay. Uh, you know, I like to think of it myself that way. So in preparation of today, I watched one YouTube video last night. Uh, it was a guy showing you how to do exercises for, you know, driving. Uh, for, for golf and uh, we'll see if that plays out well today. I don't know. I might have picked up some tips. I might show these guys something. I don't know. We'll see. Got it in that, that thing right there. Oof. There you go. Oof. I can tell this one's nice. This thing's got some heft to it. I started working in a craft beer bar. Never really drank beer or liked beer before that. Uh, I was mostly into wine. But once I started drinking some of the beers out of Belgium, some of the Saison, some of the Sours, I really was like, okay, there's more here than I thought. So then I wanted to know everything I could about it to sell people on the product and just know more about it, take people on an adventure. And, and the thing that kind of made the most sense was to start making my own beer at home and it just kind of turned into okay how do you turn a career out of this yeah I've been with this company six years and went from cleaning growlers to leading the project and uh, it's been a great time <laughs> you were you were going for the John Deere man I think more often than not, people have been brewing at home and either want to own their own brewery, you know, get into it that way, start their own brewery, or try to get a job, entry level job at a brewery, just washing kegs, growlers, kind of like what I did. So I think it's pretty common. And that's where you get this diversity of people that come in. You know, you get people from all different backgrounds. You know, in the macro beers, you get a lot of people that are, you know, master's degrees in, in chemistry and all this stuff. And, you know, there's, maybe four brewers working at a plant, all highly specialized. Craft beer is about a diverse group of people all, you know, putting their, their input into it, their experiences into it, and making a different product for people. Yeah, mine was definitely somewhere over here. Oh. All right, all right, one more, one more. Uh, now it's all the way over. One-handed. Woo! Ooh, baby. So I've been like part of craft beer since 2011. Been brewing professionally since 2014. And the industry has changed so much. I mean, you didn't have New England IPA then. You know, you didn't have these fruited kettle sours. You know, making a Berliner was out there. Making a Goza was out there. Uh, you know, barrel aging has become huge. And, you know, the biggest thing right now is especially in the time of COVID, a lot of us are experimenting with hard seltzer because that seems to be like where people are going. And as breweries, we're allowed to make that and it seems like the customers are kind of catching on to it. You know, you get to the tea box and you're seeing in trash cans that used yep. to be full of, you know, domestic, watered down beers. You're seeing more seltzers than anything yeah. now. Why do you think that is? Um, you know, low calorie, easy to drink, doesn't fill you up, um, flavorful. I think flavor is a big thing. Flavor, I guess that's another thing that's changed over the last, you know, decade, is people think more in flavors now than styles, right? So people are more apt to be like, I want the mango, or I want the beer that tastes like a mango. Why not a seltzer that literally tastes like a mango? So for better or worse, that's kind of like where we're at. So if you can get a succinct uh, package with a little bit of alcohol and it packed with a ton of flavor, unlike your traditional Mick Ultras and all that stuff, uh, I think that's where it's, where there's a lot of room to grow. And I think especially for small breweries. Look at that shot. Look at that, like, look at that shot. He's got the camera right up to the, I'm sure it looks pretty cool. Would've looked cooler if you made it. What were your preconceived notions about golf? If you had any at all, or what were your thoughts about golf prior to ever playing? I've actually watched a lot of golf on TV. You know, the older members of my family like to watch it on TV. In that capacity, when they're cutting from player to player and shot to shot, 
it kind of, you know, it makes it kind of exciting, I think, but my preconceived notion of it would be like the downtime between those shots might be a little boring. And that's kind of like why I'm thinking, okay, they're cutting between all these different shots to keep it exciting, keep you engaged. So actually playing it right now though, I mean, I know there's cameras and everything, but you're just chatting, you're hanging out. Um, I could totally see this as a, as a thing to do. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done some events at golf courses. Our brewery tries to do as many as we can uh, because it's a great way to connect with different groups of people. Um, you know, we'll set up at a hole, chat, see what they're drinking, what they brought to the brought to the golf course. What's the reality of being a brewer? So it's really early mornings, kind of like the golf thing, you know? So this was easy to get up this time. Usually in at 6.30, you know, you're dealing with a lot of chemicals, a lot of hot water, you know, a lot of, a lot of dangerous things. And it's, it's a lot of cleaning because you got to make sure everything's sanitary. Everything's got to look good for the customers. Everything's got to look good um, across the board. It's not just sitting around drinking all day. You know what I mean? Um, it's actually really dangerous to be drinking while you're doing the job. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. You really gotta, you gotta be paying attention. Yeah, so we're actually relatively small for a brewery. Uh, we have a 10 barrel brew house. So we brew 300 gallons of beer at a time. We do have tanks that will allow us to scale up. You know, we'll do a couple batches into one tank of something similar. And before COVID, honestly, the majority of it was going to draft. So we'd be bringing kegs to our own buildings. We have five restaurants, soon to be six total in the Hangar Pub and Grill group. We've had to pivot in almost entirely to cans for the last couple months. So that's been a challenge. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, we're pretty small. Didn't see anything. I had that one good one. Keep your head down. Don't. I try, know. Try and swing smooth too, nice and easy. Don't try and like really. Like hammer it like a baseball. Yeah. I know. I'll watch your ball. You keep your eyes on on, on the ball on the ground. There you. Holy shit. Boom. <laughs> Yo, was that YouTube video and then that tip? I mean, I love this. That's why I love golf. Dude, right there. Was, me too. Right? Look at that. Me too. It's the first <laughs> time playing. Well, it's like, you know, you like I love sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just never played this as a sport. Right. So then like you hit a good shot like, you like, yo, that was sick. You can dude. feel it. It's like when you drain a three-pointer. Yeah. Like yeah. from that like from way back. You, get you know what I mean? Girl, you're like, whoa! I just did that. You know? Yeah. 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 No, hitting a, it's like hitting a home run. Yeah, basically. You know, I mean, it looked good from back there, yeah. but we'll see. I think you're on the green. That would be. I think you have the best shot out of all of us. No, I, I would be shocked. You can't tell from here. You gotta, we gotta get a little closer. All right, now I'm gonna flub it up. Uh, I'll take this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'd aim a little to 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 the to the right because yeah. we got the. Oh, too hard though. I want this. This is for me. Oh. Almost got it. <laughs> Almost got that right in the trash can. Oh. Oh, it's this close. Like in regards to like starting a new project or anything, like when are you like, let's make a new beer? You know, we all talk collectively as a group. That's how all of our process development happens. I mean, everyone has their different, you know, interests, different information. So working as a team really helps that. Let's say we come across a large amount of a new hop that might lead us to try to develop a new beer around that. You know, and if it works out, we might want to try and, you know, expand on that. And honestly, this year has been interesting because, you know, distribution has been key. So we've been kind of moving away from the heavily hopped beers and just going for our classics. A lot of it's influenced, you know, like, oh, we have an amazing beer from someone else. Say, hey, I really like how these flavors work together. Let's try this twist on it, or let's try this, or, you know, I think that's why collaborations are so huge too. It's a good uh, opportunity for two breweries to say, hey, this is outside of our comfort zone, but let's try something like this. And that's where a lot of these key developments for us have happened, working with other breweries, which is, pretty much unlike any other industry you can think of, you know, competing businesses working together, not really, not really common. Um, so that's the other great thing about craft beer.
this last hole, as I already have, and so is he. We're both gonna use the five iron for the rest of the hole. preconceived notions that you had of golf, are they still the same or have they changed? No, I mean my opinion of golf has totally changed. It's nice being outside, being social, um, and it actually doesn't take as much time as I thought it would. And the in-between when you're not hitting the ball is actually a lot of fun. Getting into golf, yeah, you think it's like, alright, you need all this equipment, you need to have a time too. So like, the, I mean just being able to play and get through nine holes like that, yeah, it, it felt quick yeah. and that's another surprising thing to me, I guess. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Caleb, for coming out and hanging out with us. This has been an episode of In Between Nines. We'll see you on the next one.